I looked at myself in the mirror, and my grandmother's words went through my head. We've all had this experience, right? You've heard somebody else's words go through your head, and they were loud, right? And it was, it's time. Do something or stay quiet. This was a phrase that she said to me the whole time I was growing up. Do something or stay quiet. And so it's time. I got mad enough. It's time. So what am I mad about, right, other than the vote on cloture? One of the things that I'm really mad about, as Kathy and Tom talked about, are the infringements on our rights and our liberties as citizens. So I take a look at the Constitution, and there are 26 things for Congress to keep up with. That's it. There's 26 things. There are 18 things in Article One, Section 8 that are the powers of Congress. If it's not in there, don't do it. It's very clear. There are a <coughs> few things listed, eight things listed, in Article 1, Section 9, that it says, in case you're confused, do not do these things. If there was any confusion, stay out of it. Then just in case there was any more confusion, they added the Bill of Rights, which is basically a restraining order on the federal government. <laughs> so how is that working for us, right? Um, if, if, if we were taking a look at the House, and the House is the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, between some of the storms that we would have in, in terms of the 1934 Firearms Act and some of the other termites of tyranny that have affected our house. We've got holes in the house. We've got rain coming in, right? This all needs to be shorn up. And it's all very basic. You go back to Article 1, Section 8. Is it in there or is it not in there? It's very clear. Um, another key concern of mine is infringements on the Second Amendment. I'm not quite, I'm very confused as to shall not be infringed. It seems like it's very clear to me. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why this is, I'm not sure why there's a debate about it. Shall not be infringed. It's very clear. Um, as far as the Fourth Amendment with the NSA spying and some of the other things that are going on, same thing. What's, what is confusing about shall not be violated? Get a legal warrant, right? Um, and the last thing that I'm really, really concerned about from a societal issue is every day, 22 vets and one active service member commit suicide. This is a real concern to me, right? The, the other real concern that I have associated with military is the rampant rate of rape in the military. And so I've had this question. So Rebecca, as U.S. Senator, what can you do about rapes in the military? Well, here's the deal. I can't do anything about it directly because the military command takes care of the military. However, the Senate does have confirmation authority. And if it becomes clear, so ma'am, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you for, as an example, right? You're a colonel in the Army. And you are up for promotion. You just might get promoted to a one star. Okay, here's the deal. This is coming up in like the next two years. You've been given a heads up. It's coming up in the next two years. You're probably going to go check out what the confirmation criteria is, right? What are the senators look? What are the senators looking at? What are the senators asking about? If you found out that one of the key concerns was the number of rapes in your unit, what would you do? Uh, start cracking down on it. Exactly. Thank you for playing, <laughs> right? So I don't have direct control in the U.S. Senate. What I do have is influence. And I can use that influence to make a difference in the life of the military. So those are, are, those are kind of my big issues. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yes, ma'am. On the military suicides that you were referring to, mm -hmm. I understand where, where I, I agree with you on that. 
what has happened recently is the backroom deal with John Cornyn, and I, I cannot, off the top of my head, remember the other mm -hmm. senator that came into this, but they are trying to do a backdoor gun grab using the military suicides and the, the mental health to come after the guns. Well, how, how would you differentiate between the two and not cross that line of... So let's, let's, let's first start with the Second Amendment, okay? The Second Amendment says, shall not be infringed. It doesn't say, shall not be infringed unless you happen to be military, TBI, PTSD, or you've taken methylene. It doesn't say that. I've read it. I've looked. If any of you wonder about it, I've got a copy in my purse. You can take a look at it. But it doesn't say that. It says, shall not be infringed. Now, having said that, if you own a gun, or a knife, or a baseball bat, or a hammer, or a vehicle, or raid, you are responsible for its use. Okay? But let's be, let me be very clear about that. You are responsible for its use. If somebody steals it, they are responsible for its use. Ma'am, if somebody breaks into your house and steals your grandmother's pearl necklace and then, go uses, and then goes and uses it to murder someone, you are not responsible for that murder. Right. The pearl necklace is not as responsible for the murder, okay? So, <coughs> shall not be infringed. Let's start with that, okay? Based on that, I believe the rest of your question kind of goes away. Is, do you agree? Yes. Okay, any other? <coughs> yes, sir. Well, I'll one, <coughs> one thing is I'm tied into LeakNet, which is tied into the CIA ideas and all this stuff, uh -huh. right? Um, most of the rapes that are happening in the military is man on man. Okay. It's don't still ask, wrong. Don't ask, don't tell. It's still <laughs> wrong. Exactly. <coughs> the thing about it is, is everybody, when they hear the word rape, thinks it's a man against a woman. It could be. It could be a woman against a man. Well, that's true, too. Rape is sex without consent. Exactly. But the problem with the suicides is the SSRIs that they're giving us at the VA, and the VA is the most incompetent. I, let's do it like this. I'd rather have medical aid from a postal worker. Oh, and they are incompetent too, but at least he might have a band-aid mess for me. I'd like to see something where, not that we get rid of the top structure, we get rid of all these 30 years in there that have been through various administrations and just weaseled their way back and forth. Because the administrators here at the Fort Worth Clinic, they spend more time walking the hallways and going to the snack bars than they spend time doing stuff in their offices. I've been waiting for a new doctor for over eight months now. All right, so let me ask you a question. Do you mind? Can we, can we play for a little bit here? Let's have dialogue. Is there not a valid, useful medical industry in the United States already? I'm not in the military. I've never been in the military. Who, who here has not been in the military? Okay, sir. Do you go to doctors? I do. How does that happen? I select a doctor. My, uh, so there's, there's another my medical industry. I'm on Obamacare health insurance. <laughs> so, so why aren't... So why have a VA? Why, are we, why, why do we have vet, necessarily vet doctors? Unless there are special conditions specific to veterans, I guess it's possible, but you know what? You both look human today. So unless there is something special to veterans, there's no reason to have special vet doctors. You should be using the same system he's using. Well, my, my, my thing about it is, though, um, how do I say? Just spit it out. I'm good. You won't offend me. There was a, there was a legislator mm -hmm. who said that the best thing that could happen to the veterans or veterans is the veterans administration closed. Mm -hmm. And then use your veterans card to go to a doctor to send the bills to the government and let them pay for it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it makes more sense to me than having these I think it makes a whole lot more sense. I mean the, the facility efficient. here at VA is an outpatient mm -hmm. clinic. Why didn't they turn why didn't they make it a hospital? <laughs> Why, why aren't you in the same hospitals everybody else is in? Yeah, because I'm a veteran. 
And so becoming a, a veteran, what they install giraffe DNA in you and you're no longer human? This makes no sense, right? <laughs> it makes no sense. You should be using the same medical facilities. And I'm joking, obviously, right? But you should be using the same medical facilities everybody else is. Having that type of an overhead is ludicrous. It's ludicrous. It's expensive. We're seeing the quality that's coming out of it, right? You don't look happy. Well, they get, the, they get the B graders, the guys who went to Granada and got their degree in 12 years. They get those kind of people. They don't get the brightest and the best. And you know what? So I'm, I'm going to tell you that when, um, so I was an electrical engineer. I spent 26 years in defense. Um, and one of the studies that I did was on blast waves. So when, if, if you've ever watched like an IED go off or some of the bombs go off, you can literally see on a video a pressure wave go out, right? You can see the wave go out as if it's like a, you, you've dumped a, a pebble in water. It's that type of wave that goes out. So my question was, what effect does that wave have on the brain? Because the brain sits inside a bone cavity and it floats. And pressure waves move water. So if the pressure wave is moving the water, that means the brain is moving and the brain is probably hitting the bone. And I know that when the brain hits the bone, that's called a concussion and you get a bruise. So I was sitting there and I was wondering about this. So I made some phone calls and I found the lead neurologist at Walter Reed. And we did a little study. And guess what? Blast waves create concussions. So, okay, so you're saying, okay, well that sounds like a vet injury. Well, don't football players get concussions? Children. Children get concussions? Car racers. Car racers, so other people get concussions. Yeah. Ooh, puppy dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, the other people get concussions too, right? So there is there is data on how to deal with TBI. PTSD is the same type thing. Vets are not the only ones that get PTSD. Children that have been in accidents get PTSD. People that have had somebody break into their house and try to rape them get PTSD. People that have lived through rape get PTSD. Right? So these are these are not things that only vets deal with. They're things that are in the populace and need to be dealt with as a whole. But, but what it is is that <clears throat> post-traumatic stress has become a victim of soft language. So I'm going to tell you, number one, that the... the you used a word, and I know what you meant, but it's a word that really, I think, does a disservice to everybody with PTSD, and you use the word victim. And you know what? People with PTSD aren't victims. They're survivors. And we don't need to be treating them like victims. Now, I know what you meant, right? And that's not what you meant at all. But there are some people that treat people with PTSD as if they are victims, mm -hmm. and they're not. They're survivors, every single one of them. Whether you're a child that watched your parents die in front of you in a car accident, or you're a vet, you've got PTSD by definition. You survived something traumatic. But I'd certainly prefer that they call it shell shock. Because if the veterans coming back from Vietnam with post-traumatic stress syndrome had been said they had shell shock, they'd have gotten a lot more respect. Words matter, right? Words matter, absolutely. And you're right, shell shock has more of a survivor connotation to it than PTSD does. Well, absolutely. Dif it differentiates when somebody that was in a car accident versus somebody that had an IED blow up on them while they Exactly. Be. It's, you know, they're mm -hmm. both in a car and they're both having an accident, but this guy's in a field of combat and this person just going to the Kmart or something. Right. 
It's still the government's way of taking your guns. If you notice that word, PTSD was not brought about until Obama administration. And that it's his back, no, but it become more common. It's something they're throwing out every single time that happens. It's PTSD and it always affects a vet. It's their way to use it as a back door yes. for gun rights. Exactly. And see, that's one of the reasons why I don't tell them. Yeah. Well, and there are a lot of vets that are not telling. This is a this is a serious problem that just came out with the the VA report, and I don't know. And so I'm quoting the VA report when I say 22 vets a day. But if you go off and do the analysis, and I've done the analysis, the average is 30 a day, with it going between 26 and 34 is the range. That's the that and that's using their own numbers. So yes, sir. My question to you: It sounds like you're a strict constitutionalist. I am a strict constitutionalist. That's what I wanted to hear. I am glad that <laughs> message came through. If there was any confusion, thank you for so clarifying. So it simplifies everything. Yeah. The Senate and, and the House of Representatives should do. Is that what you would fight for if you were elected? Yes. Very good. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so it's so, you know, Kathy and Tom talked about pushing back on the federal government, pushing back on the federal government. So I'm going to bring up, uh, you know, one other area of the Constitution. And a little, it's a little bit different view probably than you've ever heard on the Amendment 10. Okay. A, a lot of people talk about Amendment 10 and they say it's the state's rights amendment. I disagree. It's not the state's rights. If you read what it says, it says, I'm paraphrasing, federal government, you're allowed to do only what's in the Constitution. Everything else, you can't, it either belongs to the state or the people. There's an order of precedence laid out there. Okay? So, to me, this is like going to my niece. It's about this tall, and saying, Dylan, here are the things that you're allowed to do in the kitchen. You're allowed to open up the refrigerator and get your juice box, and you're allowed to, I don't know, we're going to say, you're allowed to put, put bread in the toaster, and you can you push the button on the toaster. That's it. That's what you're allowed to do. If you want to do anything else, you can ask your brother Ryan, or you can either come and get mommy or me or daddy. Those are your options. Now, in that example, who has the power? Dylan. Does Dylan have the power? Who's, who, who's setting the rules for what Dylan's allowed to do? Your brother. The grown-ups, absolutely, the grown-ups are setting them. Dylan, you can get juice box out of the refrigerator, and you can use the toaster. Other than that, you need to go talk to your brother, and he'll do the things that he's allowed to do. And if he's not allowed to do it, then you come and get Mommy, Daddy, or Aunt Bubbles. Right? Those are your choices. The Tenth, tenth Amendment is set up the exact same. Federal government... Here are the things that you're allowed to do if it's not on that list. You either need to go to the state or it's a right of the people. Who's in charge? The people are in charge. It's supposed to be the people, right? So the Tenth Amendment is, is an amendment on states' rights, yes, but more importantly, it underscores the fact that the people are in charge. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you elected uh, a U.S. Senator, what is your plan to our state of Texas? Mainly, specifically, what is your plan? What is the plan for the state of Texas? Texas yes. So the U.S. Senate role doesn't it doesn't get involved specifically in the internal politics of any state. Okay. So I can't say. I'm going to go do X, Y, Z in Texas, right? That's the job of the governor and, and the state representatives below. 
Oh, in case of that, so what is your plan for the United States or our, our government, our country? For our country is number one, the federal government needs to stay within the bounds set for it by the Constitution. That frees up a lot of things. As you say that it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, right? I mean, it's in the Constitution or it's not in the Constitution. If it's not in the Constitution, the federal government shouldn't be doing it. So my plan is, any bill that comes up, I will pull out my handy dandy little pocket Constitution and I will look in Article 1, Section 8, and I'll say, is it there? And if the answer is no, I will vote no. If the answer is yes, I will take a look at it and see if it makes sense. It's kind of like Justin Amash's approach, Justin Amash from Michigan. Yeah, so I mean, it's, I mean that, that's basically it. It's, it's, it's something that, it's very simple, right? Our founding fathers didn't set up something complicated. They set up something very simple that anybody can look at and use. The Constitution is not written in Swahili, right? It's written in English, and it's not written in all that hard English, right? It's, it's written in like sixth to eighth grade level English. And it's written in sixth to eighth grade level English on purpose. It's not supposed to require a PhD in legal studies to be able to read it and understand what's happening. So it's either in the Constitution or it's not. It's not in the Constitution. I will be voting no. Well, that's the problem. I know you said it's very easy to understand and everything, but in the precedent right now, it's not following. Well, he's not American either. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't count. So, you know, people have to be held accountable. That, that's what it boils down to. It boils down to accountability. You can't just go, no, 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 and expect everything to be okay. You know, this is a this is our country we're talking about. It's not a game of peekaboo. So people have got to be watching, and people have got, and and if people are doing the wrong thing, they need to be held accountable. Yes, ma'am. This is just kind of for anyone. It's not really a question. Okay, I'll I'll take it over here. So. I work for Walmart. And I'm just an hourly employee. I'm not rich. I'm actually low income, but I'm self-sufficient. Me and my husband both are. And Walmart is a great company. They have good you know, benefits. Mm -hmm. And the owners are very, very, very rich. But there's a lot of lazy, should I say it, lazy people they hire. Okay. They don't deserve 10 bucks an hour <clears throat> just because they're, they get hired there. And I don't, I mean, I'm just against raising minimum wage. I so, think that they, so this is my question for you. Can you show me in Article 1, Section 8, where it says that the federal government is supposed to be setting minimum wage? No. Okay. no. I, so I can tell you it's not in there. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And right. so that basically takes care of that. Yeah. There should be no federal minimum wage. Yeah, that, that's hard. <laughs> I mean, I started out there at minimum wage. I've been there nine years. You get yearly evaluations. You get raises according to your if you're a good worker or not. If you're not a good worker, you're not going to get any, you know. Yeah. But it's a great well, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's that's the that should be fair. fair. The way they did your health care is an example of there was actually some uh, – conservative politician that brought out the fact that the federal government should run their health care like Walmart does. And they was like, was like boo hoo boo you know, you know. I can't remember who said it, but he was kind of booed out of it. But uh, they are a good company. I've been there nine years, just a regular. And you know what? Manager. The federal government shouldn't be in the middle of Walmart's business. Yeah, unless, unless Walmart is doing things to break other laws. Right. If Walmart decides that instead of firing people, they're going to murder them, I have a problem with that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, so I want to be clear about that. I'm so supportive of them that they did that. Yes. Okay, so you right. talked about um, the Tenth Amendment, uh -huh. and you talked about the enumerated powers. Um, the number of the amendment eludes me, but the amendment that's, that changed the senator's which were originally elected by the House legislature are now directly elected by the people. In my opinion, I think, was one of the um, bulwarks for state sovereignty, for states to be able to push back and to keep the, the Congress within the enumerated powers. Where do you stand on the electoral process for senators? Are you happy with the current? Or so I would like to have you write that up to put it on my website because it was brilliantly stated. 
That's where I stand on that. I would like to see. I would like to. I would like to see that amendment repealed. I don't think it's of service to the people. Number one, and remember, the people are the ones in power, right? Let's be real clear about this. The people are the ones in power. I don't think it's good for the people, and I don't think it's good for the states. So I think that needs to be repealed. It removed power from the people. It removed By power. allowing the states to do it. I mean, overall, people who elect being a representative from the state are by taking out And ways. the state then, and then, and then yeah. the state officials represent or elected the senators. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it makes the senators accountable to the state. Well, it allowed people to get elected through being bought, basically. So exactly. then they get to pick your senator. So it takes you out of the equation. So. Yes, sir. I just got one question. Uh -huh. If you were watching the State of the Union address, you were sitting I in that... I watched it. <laughs> if you were sitting in that audience and you heard what he, uh, Obama said about taking control of things and, and doing doing whatever he wants, mm -hmm. what would you have done? So there, so, so I'm going to expand on that a little bit, and then I'm going to answer your question okay. directly. Does that work? That works. So I will tell you that the, the night after the State of the Union address, I was on a radio show called On, on, the, on the Air with Mike Gallon, and he's in the Austin area. And I went through and I did a word-by-word -word linguistic analysis of the State of the Union address. The number of times that our president said he was going to go around Congress was in the double digits. Okay? He flat out said, I'm going around. There were also eight times that the president was very, and I'm going to use this adjective, you could argue with me, and if you want to argue with me, that's fine, I'll take it, but I'm going to say that they were derisive, okay? Things like, if Congress feels like doing something, think about that for a second. So, Kathy, mm -hmm. let's say, let's say we're sisters. Okay. We're now sisters. Right. And our mom is having her 70th birthday. And so we're going to put, we're going to put a party together, right? We're a team. Right. You're the president. I'm Congress. Okay. Oh, God. You're the president. I'm Congress. But this is supposed to be a team, right? Yeah. The executive branch is supposed to work with the Congress, right? Right. Okay, so we're a team. You know what? Let's switch this because I want to know how you feel about this. We're going to switch it. I'm Thank president. you. I didn't want to be I'm Obama. The, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the president in your Congress. Okay. And then you can tell me how you feel about this statement. Okay. Okay? And so we're going to be talking to you, and your name is? Billy. Billy. It's nice to meet you, Billy. I'm nice Rebecca. To meet you. So we're having a conversation, and I'm saying, you know, Billy, so I got the entertainment, and I arranged for the service, and, um, you know, I can't get Kathy to do anything. And so <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and decide on where we are. And, you know, if Kathy decides to actually do something to help, she can maybe help decorate. So, Kathy, how does that make you feel? Are you a younger sister? <laughs> right? Did you hear the tone of voice? Right? For, for those of you that were over here, could you? Did you see what she said? Did you see the body language? She was not pleased. She was not needed. Right? She was not pleased. And by not pleased, I mean not pleased in the tone of voice that women use when they say things are fine. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Right? You know what that Fine. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah, so that's not, that's, that's it, right? But So you were not pleased. Right. What do you think Congress felt when Obama said, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing this? And yeah. Congress feels like, <laughs> help it! They clapped. They stood up. And yeah. Cruz did it. Yeah. Cruz did not. Cruz did not. No, right. Cruz did not. Not all of them, but yeah, yeah. some of them did. did. Now, why did they do that? Because they're idiots. Yeah, I'm not seeing how that works. I don't know why. I don't know. 
You know what? They didn't listen to the speech. They didn't no. listen. That's number one. Number two, they don't want to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is Banner. I'm Banner. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be held accountable. Right? Because, because now they can say, It's his fault. It's his fault. Right. He did it. So they're clapping because they don't have to be held accountable. Inside, after they went home and they thought about it and they re and they heard it again, they went, what? <laughs> what did he say? I think I've just been told that I'm irrelevant. Exactly. And what happens when you're irrelevant? Bye bye. Right? You have no voice. So I'll tell you one of the stories when I um, I took over a team in Raytheon, and so I, I went over and I had my first staff meeting, and we were talking about things, and a problem came up, and I wanted to set an example that you know brainstorming was okay, and I want I wanted to get diverse opinions. So I'm like, okay, well, what if we do X Y Z? And everybody went. Okay, this, took, this told me everything I knew about the management that had been, been in place before me. And my response to them was, so you guys are all my team, right? This is, this is what I told you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are ten of us in the room. If all of you agree with me, nine of you are irrelevant. <laughs> because you know what? I'm not that smart. I can't come up with the best decision on my own. This is a $250 million project. And I've been on it for a total of two hours. Right? I need help. If you guys aren't going to help me, I'll get people who will help me. And somebody said, you mean you really want feedback? Yes. Yes, I do. I want feedback. Right? And so, and so we got into a dialogue, and you know what? We ended up coming up with a decision that was oodles better than what I threw on the table. And the project took off, and it was very successful, and we came in under budget, and we came in ahead of schedule, and the product went off and is saving lives overseas right now. So it worked. But it worked because the team came together. And the team is everybody. The team is the president, the team is Congress. And if the president is telling Congress that, he, that they're not needed, the team is dysfunctional, just as if I was being tyrannical with my management team, right? I wanted input. So that's a, that's a problem, right? So now having that kind of in the back of your mind about what I'm thinking, I would have gotten up and walked out. I wouldn't have stayed. And I wouldn't have stayed for a reason. I don't have to be in the room to hear the speech. I heard the speech on TV. And I read the transcript the next day. But by be being in that room, there is a commitment, a level of support that goes with that. And I do not support tyranny at any level. So did that answer your question? It yeah. Mostly, mostly it will. Okay. So hold on a second. So give me another chance. It, it seemed like to me they should have just ganged up on him and drug his butt out of there. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't control the behavior of other exactly. people. Exactly. I understand you know? that. Um, if now, it, now, I will say that if they had gotten up and assaulted him in any manner, I would have stopped that too because yeah. that's illegal. Yeah. Uh, but I can't control other people's behavior. Right. I can only control mine, and I would have walked out. Well, that's, that's a good answer. Yes. So, like what you say, uh -huh. your name is Rebecca, what is your last name? Haddock. And I've got a virtue. So, here's my question. Well, okay. It's not necessarily about policy, it's more process to get you a life. Uh -huh. So, John Coyne's commercials tell us that it must be true that he's the second most conservative mm -hmm. person in the Senate. <laughs> What is your... It must be. Must be true, it yeah. must be true. Okay. We all know it's a lie. <laughs> what, how is your campaign set up? How are you going to set up? What can we do? What, what systems do you have in place on your campaign to get more name recognition for you to get you out there and get you elected? 
Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a, a great where, question. Where are you on that? So I have a website up. Okay. It's www.rebeccapaddock.com. Mm -hmm. I have a campa campaign Facebook page. I've had a campaign Twitter. I've created a campaign YouTube account. Mm -hmm. um, I went to SHOT Show. I don't know how many of you are familiar with SHOT Show. Mm -hmm. SHOT Show is the big gun industry, um, and it's for industry professionals. So it's not something that the everyday person, did I spell something? No. Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something no. that the everyday person can go to, right? So I was able to get somebody to take me. Um, as a guest mm -hmm. to go around and meet people in the industry and understand what's <laughs> happening. So I'm a huge pro Second Amendment advocate, and that's a big industry, right? I, mm -hmm. I don't know everything about the industry. So I wanted to get some insights and see what was happening, that type of a thing. As a result of going to Shock Show, I have a lot of national type people <coughs> that are interested in me. Um, I've been on several national radio shows. Uh, I don't know if you know who James Yeager is. James Yeager is a national level person in the firearms training industry that has come out endorsing me. Um, he's put together a video introducing me to people. Um, if you you may you may know Boone Cutler. Boone Cutler is uh, I was on Boone's show on Wednesday. In fact, if you're listening, um, but he has a radio show called Tipping Point with Ben Cutler, and he is, um, he's one of the people that, that's been advising me specifically on that 22-day, day-in-day-out suicide statistic. Um, and so I have national attention for him. So I'm working, uh, as you said, Cornyn is a, is a, he's a, he's he a tells big, us he's, he's a big fish, right? Senator in the, in the and, this, and this race has national attention. So I am getting national support from, uh, you know, people that are pro-2A, people that are pro-4A, people that are pro-Constitution, and people that are interested in sorting out this 22 a day that suicide thing. So I'm, not, I'm getting national attention in that way. I think that your message of, of, of simplistic, strict adherence to the Constitution mm -hmm. would actually appeal to some of the other side. <laughs> this point, I see a little bit of the tide turning now. I see people on that other side so it's getting a little discussion. So interesting that what, you say that. <laughs> what is your, what, so uh, where are you as far as organization of walking precincts and all that? Um, what walking you, precincts? You no, know, you get your name out there. That's the whole state. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, I'm not, so I'm not going to be walking all the precincts. Well, no, I'm going to be walking all the precincts. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Oh, he's saying he'll do it for you. Uh, you just, what is, you know, where are you as far as organizational structure? In, in, in so, I'm putting it, so I'm putting it together. I'm looking for volunteers. So, okay. He's volunteering. So, that's what yeah. he did. <laughs> oh, that was implied. If I could just kind of what? Aaron, sure. Um, what Kathy's campaign is looking at doing is, um, because the Libertarian Party is um, light in funds as usual, right. um, we're looking at um, coalescing with other candidates and having a coalition for walk walking where we could, you know, the big um, ticket guys maybe, you know, and all candidates put their funds together to get the software and the info of registered voters in the counties that the other two parties are using, and then we, we team up to where it's not just her walk walking. Right. It's it's all libertarian candidates. So that's what we're trying to do is okay. have a coalition to beat the lack of funds. If you make contact, I believe if you make contact with voters, you have a lot better chance of having them remember your name at the ballot time. Oh, uh, it shows a face to face yeah. Yeah. walking. Yeah. Is, is different. So I wanted to follow up on something else you said. So thank you for for bringing that's that up. That's a good thank you. Yeah. Um, the, what you said about there are people willing to come over. Yeah. So I will tell you, you are absolutely right. So far, I have been on several radio shows, and the people that interviewed me, a lot of them, when we were done, we hung up and they went, you know? No, see? I think you've convinced me that I'm actually libertarian. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Like, yes! Right? Okay, success. Yeah. Yeah. Your so, time has come, I think. So, yeah. So, it's time, right? It's back to what my grandmother said. Yep. It's time. I think your message is good. It's clear. Good feedback. 
And you know what? If you guys have suggestions on how to get the message out, how to make it any more clear, if something I'm saying is a little bit fuzzy on it, feel free to let me know because communication is not about what I'm saying. Communication is about what you're hearing, right? So if you're confused, I need to change my communication. And I am completely good with feedback. Yes, ma'am. This will be quick and at the risk of sounding like a broken record, attempting to do due diligence to uh -huh. my Absolutely. number one concern. Um, Department of Education is unconstitutional, is how I feel. And it's not in Article 1, Section 8. Okay, so that's number one. So to get it on record, that's what I'm saying. Article to 1, Section 8 does not include it. Now, having said that, I am, I am going to go beyond my bounds as a U.S. Senate candidate here for a second, okay? So I'm going to walk over here so that there's a different anchor point, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you brought this up three times, and I think it's really important to you. So I want to address it as a Texan and as a citizen, okay? Because it doesn't belong in the U.S. Senate race, okay? But I can tell this is important to you. So Kathy and Tom talked about what is in the Texas Constitution. What is in the Texas Constitution is that Texas is supposed to be teaching children what to do about our liberties. That's it. Did you hear math or science in there? What about teaching cursive? Did you hear that? Art? I agree with you, it does not belong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you that it doesn't belong in the Senate. The unfortunate thing is it is in the Senate in a very big way. Right and now. so so now I'm gonna go back over. Now I'm gonna go back to my spot, right? <clears throat> and it's it's not in the Constitution. No. It's not there. The Department of Education should not exist. Common Core should not exist. You know who's responsible for Educating our children, the state is responsible for some of it. The federal government is not responsible for any of it. The state is responsible for training the liberties portion, and the people, especially the parents, are responsible and should be able to choose the education that their children get. I I think that's all very clear. I'm, I'm not sure what's confusing about that either. But that's my opinion on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. So, Kathy, I think I'm out of time. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Uh, if we could just do it.